Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Short Play, a series of quick tours of games I like on a variety of platforms, new and old. Today's game is Test Drive Unlimited, which was a 2006 release by Atari, who at this point was actually a rebranded Infograms, because the Atari name has changed hands so many times over the years. And this was the period when Infograms decided that they would like to make use of the Atari name, so they did. Test Drive Unlimited was developed by a company called Eden Studios, and it was an attempt to pioneer the idea of what they called massively open online racing. And the principle of this was that the game took place in an open world that was a uh, supposedly a one-to-one -one recreation of the Hawaiian island of Oahu. And um, as you played the game, if you were connected to uh, Xbox Live, you would see other players driving around and you could flash your headlights at them to challenge them to impromptu races and that sort of things. Now, the service for the game were actually turned off in 2012, so this aspect of things is no longer available, and neither are the, the actual multiplayer components to this game either. Uh, but you can still play the game, there's a substantial single player component, and uh, it actually simulates some computer controlled opponents in the same way. So you can still have pretty much the same experience with this game, even in 2020. The game is followed up by a sequel in 2011, and actually a third instalment was teased in July of 2020, so there's actually a third Test Drive Unlimited game on the way, but there's no details of exactly what form that's going to take at the time of recording, so um, I guess watch out for some further details on that if you like what you see here. Let's go play Test Drive Unlimited. Okay, here we are with Test Drive Unlimited from Eden Games and Atari. So I've been playing this quite a bit uh, in my free time recently and having a lot of fun with it. So I thought I'd spend some time showing what it's all about today. And belching uh, quietly. So this is a game from 2006. Um, so it's quite an early Xbox 360 game. Uh, and so you'll you'll see things like some amusingly old school character models. And I don't think it looks too bad though. And certainly things like the cars and stuff look very nice as you'd expect from a game like this because they, they kind of nailed cars in the late PS1 era, I feel. Um, and it's just sort of been making them higher resolution and uh, with better textures and stuff ever since then. So here I am in my house. Um, Test Drive Unlimited is a game about being rich and obnoxious and collecting cars. Uh, you've come to Hawaii uh, seemingly for no other reason other than to make a bunch of money, buy some cars and buy all the houses on the island. Um, and so that's what you have to do. So I'm in my car. One of many at this point. Um, so the way this game works, you can just go off for a drive anytime you want if you feel like it. Including off-road. Whee! It's not super practical to do that. There's nothing really to discover off-road. Like, there's no hidden pickups or anything like there is in uh, Ubisoft's The Club. Um, is an, another open-world driving, driving game I'm very fond of. Um, so I'll probably cover that at some point. But I am all about this game at the minute. I'm having a ton of fun with... Uh, just revisiting this game which was an old favorite of mine back when it originally came out and uh, having not played it for probably about 15 years or so i decided to give it another go the other day and found myself absolutely hooked all over again so it's by no means the best or the most realistic driving game out there but it is fun it is fun because it's just a game about enjoying being in a car um, right, so let's do something productive. You can hit the right button on the uh, D-pad to bring up this cool satellite map of Oahu. And you can see all the stuff that's going on around the island. So these blue and orange blobs, these are events uh, that you can take part in. Uh, orange ones are multiplayer races. So unfortunately you can't do those anymore because there's no service for this game anymore. Um, but you can do all the blue stuff and there's still a lot of blue stuff to have a go at. Um... So, let's go and have a go at a blue thing. This one here, I've been really struggling uh, to actually get the gold medal on this one. So, let's go and have another go at this one. So, this is a time trial challenge uh, where we've got to pass the checkpoints to set the new target time. Uh, in order to get the gold cup on this one, uh, we need to get 3 minutes 30 
or less. And you'll see by my record in the corner, 3 minutes 31.57, I've come very, very close to this on quite a lot of occasions. Uh, but I, I have never quite managed it just yet. So um, this one, you can drive a D-Class car. And at the moment, I have these three cars in the D-Class. I have the Aston Martin DB9 Coupe. Uh, I have the Lotus Esprit, which is a lot of fun to drive, but I don't think it's quite fast enough for what we need to do here. Uh, and I have this Maserati Grand Sport here, which uh, probably has the best handling, and I think it's the fastest as well. Although the Aston Martin's giving it... Yeah, the Aston Martin's slightly faster, but this accelerates more quickly and has better handling. So I think it's a better choice for uh, this particular event. Um, so, let's give it a go. I'm not going to spend the entire um, recording session having a go at this event, but I do want to have one more go at it because it has been driving me absolutely nuts for the last few days. So I thought we'd just have another go and see how we get on. So, you'll see all the events unfold within the open world. Um, but the exact sort of implementation of them varies depending on the event. So, some events have civilian traffic, like this one. Uh, some are completely free of traffic, which are very nice. Um, some particularly harsh ones have what it calls a driving meter, which is uh, a little gauge at the side of the screen. That's not going to work, is it? Let's start there again. I said I'm not going to spend all day uh, doing this, but I'm not standing for that pitiful performance. Uh, no, some events have a driving meter at the side of the screen, which means that, uh, one, you fail if that reaches zero, uh, and you deplete it by crashing into things or going off-road. Um, and also, in the case of time trial events like this one, um, the more you lose from your driving meter, the bigger penalty you get at the end of the race. Um, and so, if you set a really good time but you made a lot of mistakes on the way in an event like that, uh, then you can end up ruining your time with your penalty. And no one likes to be penalised. So try not to be penalised. But anyway, this one here is mostly tricky because of the traffic but there's a few very tight turns like that one there that you have to uh, you have to deal with as well as so it's it's just very tight on timing generally this specific event and you'll hear that uh, our racing is being accompanied by some stirring classical music which is one of several different uh, musical accompaniments you could choose for your action uh, there are several different radio stations, but I figured the classical music was probably the safest with regards to copyright. And so that's what we're going to be listening to today. Also, I find something inherently amusing about playing racing games accompanied by music like this. I feel like I've probably made too much of a mess of this already. But let's see it through to the end and just see what we get. You know what? One more restart. One more restart. I promise. One more restart. And then we will just take whatever happens from there. Just the one. Because I do want to show you some other stuff that this game has to offer. Um, but as I say, this specific event here has been driving me absolutely bonkers. Now, one of the big appeals for this game when it first came out for me was the fact that um, it features uh, sort of really nicely rendered three-dimensional cockpits for all of the cars that you can drive. And that's something that's always been true for the Test Drive series. Not necessarily in 3D, but Test Drive, right from its very first installment, has always been about um, enjoying driving from a cockpit view. It's sort of recreating... I don't know if I want to say the real driving experience because this is very much a fantasy driving experience. Um, but the cockpit view is a big part of that. It really lets you sort of imagine that you're the next intersection, turn right. sat in these vehicles turn right. wrestling with their controls and so on. And in this version, you can use the right stick to look around and all sorts of stuff like that. And you can even 
Open the windows. And that makes the sounds slightly different. So if the windows are open, you can hear more of the sound effects around you. And in fact, there's another really entertaining option that I will show you when we're done with this race here. That makes me very happy indeed, and I haven't seen it in a racing game since. Oh, oh. Oh, God. I'm a danger to everyone on the road. But I'm okay with that. Are you? Yeah, so when this game first came out, I remember it getting criticised by some people for the driving model not feeling very realistic. Um, but that is a specific reason that I like this game, because it combines the sort of stuff that I like about um, the more simulation-style races, such as the realistic rendering of the cockpit and the sheer number of real cars available to purchase and all that sort of thing. Uh, but it combines it with more arcadey handling. Because I've never really got on with realistically handling driving games. At the next intersection, turn left. Turn left. So this is a game where you still need to slow down. You still need to use the, the brakes to get around corners and so on. But you can also do things like power slides and handbrake turns very easily. At the next intersection, turn left. And the handling in general is just much more forgiving than your average sim racer which is good with me we are not going to get the gold time by the way I can tell because I'm already behind schedule for what is my best time up until now but we'll like I say we'll see it through to the end and just see what time we do get and then we'll go off and we'll do something else and I will just yell at this event in my own free time I feel like I just haven't found the perfect vehicle for it yet. But I have tried three separate D-Class vehicles for it already and still haven't managed to quite beat it. But that's that that's part of what this game is about. Part of this game is about um, collecting a bunch of cars and figuring out what the right one for each event that you're doing is. So second place again. That'll do for now. You do get money for your bronze and silver, but you get a lot more money for um, a gold clear. Right, let's look at the map again and see what else we've got to do. Right, this icon here, this indicates that someone has got a car that they want you to deliver somewhere. And so you have to, you have to drive their car and drop it off somewhere. And we can see over on the right, this is a 15 mile drive and there's a reward of $90,000 on offer for it. So. Let's go and see, Jonathan. Now, you notice I'm fast traveling to all these locations. You have to visit them or pass by them in your own car once before you can fast travel to them. But once you've done that, you can skip to anywhere you've been before. You're taking to get it repaired? Hmm, okay. Just bring it back in good condition. Okay. So, this is a vehicle transport mission, as I say. This is an example of um, a challenge that has a driving meter. Now, if you look over on the left-hand side there, you'll see that gauge driving currently at $90,000. And what this means is if I hit anything or go off-road, um, it will, my reward will go down. However, there's also no time limit on these missions, so you can actually take your time as much as you want the on these, and it really pays to just kind of be, be a bit more careful than you would be in more of a racing event. Turn left. At the next intersection, turn right. So, especially while you're dealing with lots of tight junctions right. and... 90 degree corners and that sort of thing. It's best to sort of keep your speed down a bit. Take some time to appreciate the scenery around you. And just enjoy the drive. And then when you get out onto an obviously clearer bit of road. Then you can open it up and see what it's really capable of. Mm -hmm. 
these missions are quite nice because they they give you a a sort of opportunity to preview cars that you might not have tried before and so if you do a vehicle delivery mission and you think oh I, I really like the car that i drive on that you can then go and buy it from one of the car showrooms in most cases there are a few cars in the game that you need to fulfill special conditions before you're able to purchase them but most of the cars are fairly readily available do want to get past this truck but this road is also very windy let's oh, we don't want to undertake him on a corner with a crash barrier let me by fool and again be very careful doing things like going over hills you can't damage the car by going too fast over a hill but if you do sort of drift over the top of the hill into oncoming traffic and there's something coming the other way then uh, yeah you're gonna have a bad time nice clear bit of road there oh and I think we're coming onto the freeway yes a nice opportunity to pick up a bit of speed there are police in this game but they only really take an interest in you if you actually hit another car um so sort of like dangerous driving and breaking the speed limit and stuff they don't really give a shit but as soon as you clip something at the next intersection, turn right. They will start thinking about coming after you. Right. And it uses a sort of Grand Theft Auto style system where the more the more stuff you do while the police are chasing you, uh, the more intense their pursuit will be. So there's only three levels in this. Like, you don't get the army sent after you in this or anything ridiculous like that. But um, at the third level of intensity, uh, they do things like set up roadblocks for you and so on. So... If you're going to drive like an asshole, you need to be prepared for the consequences. But yeah, I, I like this game just because it feels like a celebration of the joy of driving. Um, I'm someone who has always been sort of passively interested in cars. I, I, I like cars. But I don't understand how they work. I don't understand how to service them. I don't know anything about maintenance or upgrades or customization or anything like that. I just like cars. And this game is perfect for me because it allows me to collect a bunch of pretty cars, drive them around, enjoy the experience of driving them around a cool location, and then not have to worry about anything complicated. Like, this. There are tuning shops in this game, but all they do, they're like sort of flat upgrades that you do to your car. There's no tinkering with gear ratios or brake stiffness or anything like that in this game. It's it's just, do you want to upgrade this car? Please hand over some money. Thank you. <laughs> and that is an aspect that kind of got a bit of criticism in its reviews on its original release. But playing it now, it's absolutely perfect for what I want from a car game. There's lots to do, or you can just enjoy the experience of driving around. Because it, it's just enjoyable to just do that in this game. That's one thing I really like about this game, is the fact that you can just go for a drive if you want to. Accompanied by the sounds of the mighty pipe organ. Because what's a lovely drive without Bach's Takata? Whoop, slow down.
So this was followed up by a sequel in 2011 that was qu quite a bit later than this one. I haven't played that version yet. Um, and I've, de I've deliberately held off trying it because I wanted to sink some time into this. And I don't know if I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to finish it. Uh, but I am about a quarter of the way through um, the available challenges in the game so far. And I'm still enjoying it. So I don't see any reason to move on to the second one just yet. Uh, because I suspect if the second one is good, I probably won't want to go back to this one. Because what the second one does is it provides... Um, it's got this island again. So it's got Oahu uh, for you to drive around. But then it's also got Ibiza as well. So there's two islands to drive around. A bunch more cars. If it came out in 2011, I assume it looks a bit better as well. I don't know. Like I say, I haven't tried it, and deliberately so at this point. Um, but I will get to it at some point when I have had my fill of this one. But that's a fair way off just yet. Because this has become... a game I put on when I just want to chill out for a bit. I don't want to think too hard about things. I don't necessarily want to engage myself with a complicated story or do a lot of reading. I just want a game where I can relax and have fun. And having a few sort of therapeutic games in your collection like that is really important. Because everyone has times when they just want to do something they enjoy, but they don't want to do a complicated form of it. And for me, this game fills that niche nicely. And with the sheer amount of stuff there is to do in this game as well, it means that I'm not just firing it up and doing the same thing every time. Aside from that one event that we uh, <laughs> we were doing at the beginning. Which one day I will crack. But unfortunately today is not quite that day. It seems. Let me through. I've got a card to deliver. Yeah, so supposedly this is a one-to-one -one recreation of Oahu. I've never been there, so I can't comment on that, but... It does seem pretty cool. I've read something somewhere that it doesn't quite get the built-up areas right. In a few places. But I think that could be forgiven for the time period. There's certainly plenty to see. There's some interestingly varied scenery as you go to the different parts of the island. At the next intersection, turn right. Whoops! Turn right. Too far. You are driving in the wrong direction. Okay. Please turn careful around. turn. Careful turn. Turn left. Very careful turn. Where am I going? Over here. Excuse me. Sorry. Only two miles to go. We're nearly there, boys and girls. At the next intersection, turn left. Turn left. But yeah, I've been surprised how much I've ended up enjoying this. Returning to it a very long time after I first played it. I, I suspect your mileage may vary, no pun intended, on 
how open you are to playing a racing game from 2006 when myriad alternatives exist. But for me, this special this game has always held a, a special place in my heart. Um, as I'll talk about in an Atari ST A to Z episode. I've kind of been a casual follower of the of the test drive series ever since the 16-bit microcomputer period. When I was introduced to Test Drive 2, the Duel. And basically, what this game provides is what I always wanted from the Test Drive series. Which is... To take the cool stuff from those early games, say the cockpit view, the ability to drive all these cool cars that you'd never be able to afford in a million years without a lottery win or just being very rich. Um, and be able to drive them around a big open world. Now that wouldn't be, have been possible with the technology of the time. Um, but with this, the technology was there to be able to do it. So, there we go. I got perfect on that. I didn't damage it at all. So that means I get the base money and a bit of a bonus as well. So I totaled $135,000 for doing that. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get money for doing that? Here, drive 12 miles and I'll give you $135,000. That would be nice. <sighs> right, let's go do another event of some description. Um, let's have a go at a race, if we can find one. Done that one. What about this one? Level E. Do I have an E rank car? I don't know. Let's find out. Right. Now, you'll see that um, this icon is kind of transparent at the minute, which means that I haven't visited this location yet. So, what I can do, though, is I can walk to this road here, which is nearby. And then just drive to it manually. And there it is. Alright, so let's have a go at this one. So, be the first to cross the finish line. $30,000 on offer. It's an amateur level race, so it hopefully shouldn't be too difficult. Let's see what cars I've got. I've got a Nissan 350Z. Nismo Artune Power. I think that was the car I started with, actually. Um, yeah, so it'll be nice to drag this out of retirement, as I haven't used this much since I've got some of the some of the faster and better cars. Let's give it a go. Oh, we've got a driving meter on this one as well. That's mean. That is mean to put that on a race against other cars. Well, anyway, you'll see what the driving meter's all about then. I really hope that doesn't mean that you lose points before hitting your opponents. <laughs> because these tend to be quite full contact races at times. But we'll see. If I can just get out in front of these guys, all I have to worry about is just staying on the track really so pretty sharp bend coming up let's give it a bit of brake action all right I think we're all good for now so just be ready for the sharp bends This is a nice car, actually. It handles really well. The The interesting thing with sort of the car classes in this is that they're, they're not a reflection of how good the car is. They're just sort of different types of car. So the E-Class car here, this is sort of um, kind of sporty saloons, I guess. And it goes right down to G-Rank. And G-Rank are all uh, classic cars. 
So you've got like American muscle cars, things like E-Type Jaguar and all that sort of thing. And so there, there are events that are specifically for G-Rank cars, which means you get a, a field full of um, just classic cars from over the years. Which is really nice to see. At the next intersection, turn right. Turn right. Ooh, that came up a little bit more suddenly than I thought it was going to. All right, one lap down. And we're decently ahead of the pack. So as long as I keep things going fairly safely, at the next intersection, turn left. Turn we left. should be good. Just got to be careful not to get overconfident or cocky. At least there's no traffic. That would have made this event nightmarish. But no, there's no traffic. And no police. So we can just race. And yes, there are races that have traffic and police. <laughs> So yeah, if it's not abundantly clear already, I really like this game. And the... Actually, inter interestingly, the um, the announcement of the new Test Drive Unlimited um, came almost immediately after I started playing this again. Um, I just happened to look up some information on online and I saw oh, sorry, oh, a, new, a new Test Drive Unlimited was confirmed in, uh, in July of 2020. I went, oh, was it? <laughs> Fair enough. Apparently it's very early in development, so there's nothing really to show at the minute. Um, but it's going to be following the same mould as this. In that it will have a one-to-one -one recreation of an island somewhere. They haven't said which one. At the next intersection, turn right. So they haven't said if it's going to be Oahu or um, Ibiza again. But it is going to be the same kind of game, with up-to-date modern graphics which will be nice so as long as it isn't um a sort of live service dlc fest i will almost certainly jump on board with that but i'm not particularly interested if it's going to be a game that's going to get loads of updates and dlc packs and that sort of thing because the thing i've been liking about this game is you, At the next intersection, turn left. you forget turn left. how little of that shit there was in the early days of the Xbox 360. You forget how there was a time in the Xbox 360's lifetime when microtransactions weren't a thing. When you didn't pay for bits of your game piecemeal, you just got the game. There was some DLC for this, but some of it was free, and all of it was just some extra cars. So, like, there wasn't any sort of major content that you were locked out of if you didn't buy the DLC for this. It was just something that would allow people who were enjoying the game to kind of expand it a bit, which is fine. I'm okay with that. It's when you start getting fairly major expansions to games with a significant amount of new content that I, I don't like because, I mean, me and Chris have talked about this on the podcast a fair amount of times, but it just makes us not want to buy the games at launch because it we know that at some point there will probably be a definitive edition or a limited run release that has all the DLC on the cartridge or the disc or whatever. And so this is just a nice reminder of a simpler time that I kind of think wasn't that long ago but it's actually a good few years ago now it's quite frightening the next intersection, turn right. I mean like, to put this in context if you're following my work on Moe Gamer um, I'm currently writing about Manakemia 2 which came out in 2009 on the PlayStation 2 this game came out in 2006 three years before that <laughs> it's ridiculous 
Anyway, I won that nicely. Thirty thousand dollars, please. Thank you very much. Right. Um. So, what can I do now? Uh, we're going to wrap up soon, but I just want to see if there's anything quick I can show you before we move on. Um. So these green blobs here, these are my houses. So this one here currently has a full garage. It's got a Kawasaki motorbike, a Jaguar XJ220, a Noble M14, and an Aston Martin in it. Uh, this one down here is my most recent acquisition, I think. That's full as well. So if I want to buy any more cars, I need to buy a new house. Um, question is, are there any houses in my budget? That one's $199,000. That one's $167,000. Um, where's the real estate company? Just there. What's that one called? Shumaluia Paradise. Let's go buy that. And then that means that I can buy some more cars and continue expanding my collection. Hi. I'd like to buy a house, please. I'd like to buy that house, please. Thanks. It's that easy. It's that easy to buy a house, boys and girls. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And you get a nice little cutscene of you moving in with your boxes. These are all your worldly possessions that you brought to Hawaii. Yes, you can buy new clothes for your character as well. Uh, this was in the early days of sort of um, product placement in games. So there's some Ben Sherman and Echo Unlimited clothing in this game, and there's even achievements for owning 10 Ben Sherman items or 10 Echo Unlimited items or whatever. Where's the entrance to my house? I just want to go inside. There we go. Nicely neat parking with all the skid marks I left on the floor there. No, nothing to do with me. I may have parked near these uh, this large collection of skid marks, but honestly, honestly, I know nothing about them. Right. Um, oh, one last thing I do want to show you in this is um, the way that this game makes quite neat use of achievements. So your progress through the game is actually measured by the, the Xbox achievements that you get in the game. Um, and you level up at various gamer score boundaries, and this is one of the one of the best uses of achievement points that I think I've seen in a game, because it makes them actually meaningful, because you're actually making progress in the game by scoring those achievements. And you see, at the moment, I've got 240 out of the thousand available. Unfortunately, there are a whole bunch of achievements to do with multiplayer that you can't get anymore. Um, but in order to get up to that top tier champion, all you need is 450. And there's more than enough single player achievements to unlock, along with purchase achievements, exploration achievements, and a few other random ones there as well. Uh, for you to be able to get 450, so no problem. Um, but yeah, for those of you who like to get a complete set of achievements, it's not going to happen in this game anymore, I'm afraid, uh, because the servers are off. But there you go. Anyway, let's leave that there for now. 24% through the game, very nice. And we've had some fun driving times today. So, for now, just remains for me to say, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time as I drop my controller on the floor. Bye!